Hello and welcome to Code with Vijay. My name is Vijay Nath Vishwanathan. I'm working as a senior software engineer and uh, this is my personal blog, uh, codewithvijay.com. You can find me on LinkedIn, GitHub and Twitter as well. Also, please don't forget to sub subscribe my channel so that whenever I upload new video, you'll get a notification. I have uh, a quite, quite a good amount of video on AWS and also I'm planning to upload videos on a lot many other technologies. Okay, a lot many, you know, latest technologies so please don't forget to subscribe okay so today you are here to learn serverless computing or serverless architecture mainly AWS Lambda okay so let's see what you will learn by the end of this session you'll get no traditional web hosting and the problems behind traditional web hosting then you will see what is serverless architecture okay and i'll explain how that will solve the very big problems we have faced or we are facing with traditional web hosting then i'll introduce you aws lambda then we'll do a hands-on lab to set up and deploy aws lambda in that i'll introduce you aws gateway in a very high level though then we'll create lambda function then we'll set up api gateway as a trigger point to run lambda function then we'll do end-to-end -end testing with postman that is a rest client so that's the agenda of this course okay stay tuned and let's see okay let's get into serverless computing world so let's discuss traditional web hosting Okay, so as you know, the first thing we should do to deploy an application to a server is to provision a server. Okay, we can't simply go and provision a server, right? We should be able to answer so many questions, right? So first of all, we should know what, si what size servers are right for my budget, okay? You know, initially I have to I have to find a budget right and I should find a server within my budget okay then I should be able to you know answer how many users create too much load for my servers basically you know I should find the SLA okay say I have for for example if I have 1 million hits per day then definitely I should need such a powerful server right then I should be able to understand you know when and how I can scale my server it means if you have more need or more hit your site or the application that you have hosted in that server then you have to scale up scale up means then you have to set up another server okay if again if you have more you know hit your site then you have to scale up another server it means you have to do all the redundant process again and again to scale up servers okay you have to update your OS and softwares in the server, okay? Then you should set up all the securities for your server. And all those things, you know, we should be able to answer and have to do that process again and again, right? So that's the total pain, isn't it? All right. Then as I told, have to set up more servers for ingress in need, that is, you know, we have to scale scale up manually okay every time we have to do that it means we need more resources to do that okay we we have more manual effort to set up all that okay so this is you know, such a pain actually you know every time we have to do redundant pro you know redundant process and we have to set up everything uh, we have to take care of everything okay so actually that will make the process of software development a bit slow do you agree because we have to wait for infrastructure team to set up all those things for you then we have to you know take care of everything security and all those things okay so that's the problem with traditional web hosting okay so far it ran pretty well I do agree that but the time and effort we spend behind that you know that may be uh, pretty high okay so that's how the way of serverless computing that will that'll be a real 
time and lightsaber okay so we can save huge amount of time okay because we don't need to bother about any of the infrastructure setup okay serverless computing who are the proprietaries here here i'm mainly focusing on uh, amazon web service okay so if you're hosting your application in aws serverless environment you don't need to bother anything about the infrastructure only thing you should do is write quality code okay and upload it to aws owned managed secure infrastructure that's the only thing you have to do or you should do right so let's see what is serverless computing or oh, in high level serverless architecture okay so the first thing but the very most important thing or the backbone behind uh, serverless computing is you don't need to set up anything you don't need to provision a server or you don't need to manage a server okay because AWS infrastructure will take care of all that okay and your code will run on demand whenever it is needed it will run okay also you don't need to bother scaling up your infrastructure okay depends on application heat or depends on load the AWS infrastructure or you know the infrastructure behind AWS serverless computing that will scale on its own it means you don't need to procure or provision another server another server again again and again depends on your need okay whenever the load is high it will automatically scale up okay whenever the load is load is uh, down it will scale down automatically you don't need to bother about anything okay then and pay as you go okay it means say your application is idle for some time okay you don't need to pay any money for that but in traditional web hosting even if your application doesn't have much hits all the servers still be online it means still it is using all the server resources okay we don't need that actually because that is total waste but in serverless computing or maybe in Ad aws lambda I'll, I'll explain you what aws lambda is okay there you don't need to pay not even a single penny for idle time okay pay as you go whenever your application has hit pay for that okay and you don't need to worry anything about security because it's all managed by aws secure environment okay and your code will always run on latest infrastructure or up-to-date infrastructure you don't need to go and you know update any softwares or operating system or anything okay it will always run on up-to-date infrastructure and aws will take care of all those things okay so as a developer you can completely concentrate on writing quality code okay trust me this is such an amazing concept that will revolutionize the way of application development and hosting okay because we can save a lot of money and time trust me that'll be a revolution so now you know what serverless, serverless architecture in a in a very high level okay now let us see what is aws lambda okay so aws lambda, lambda is nothing but just a function that will run during event trigger okay or i would say that's event driven function whenever some event happen i'll tell you what is that later so whenever an event happen your lambda function will execute okay that event can be you know many of the other aws services or you know we can directly call from an application okay or say we can call from ap gateway that's what we are going to do in our lab okay so whenever that trigger happen or you can you know run from your from your alexa device basically from amazon echo okay so whenever any event happen uh, your lambda function will trigger and the logic behind that will execute at that time okay so basically the code or the lambda function will run in aws managed environment okay you don't need to provision or manage any 
uh, servers to run AWS Lambda. Just upload your code, or you know, if it is small application, you can directly write your code inside uh, AWS Console. But I strongly recommend to write in your own uh, IDs and upload your code. Okay, so you don't need to worry about any administration kind of things. Okay, and you don't worry about any infrastructure. Okay, as I told before, pay only for the compute time you consume. And when your code is not running, you don't have to you don't you don't have to pay any money. And just upload your code. Uh, so basically, at present, uh, Lambda support uh, Node, PHP, Java, and C Sharp. Okay. So those are the four language. At the uh, I'm I'm not very sure. I have you know did they recently introduce any other language? But at least for in the last week, I remember you know they haven't introduced any other new language apart from uh, these four. Okay, so at present it will run on these four languages. So you can run your, you can you know, uh, write your code and you can upload directly to your, to AWS infrastructure. Sorry, in ed to AWS Lambda. Okay. So upload your code and Lambda take take care of everything required to run and scale code with high availability. Availability. Okay. Also, you can set up your code to automatically trigger from other AWS service or call directly from any web or mobile app okay so i'll show you how we can uh, set up a trigger from uh, one of the aws services that is api gateway okay i'll show that in our lab okay that is all about uh, or in a, in a very high level about aws lambda okay now this is how it works so upload your code to aws lambda okay then other AWS services or for mobile apps or through HTTP endpoints that is API gateway. So whenever a trigger happened uh, that will invoke Lambda function here. Okay, then that Lambda function will execute and basically the code, the, log the business logic that you, ha you have written will uh, execute. Okay, then we'll have, you know, monitoring and logging uh, all day be there on CloudWatch. Okay, and just pay uh, for your compute computing time. Okay, you don't need to pay for idle time. So, all right, now let's see how that will work. Okay, now let's jump into hands-on lab. Okay, uh, too much of theory. So let's let's see uh, how that works in real time. Okay, with some live coding. Okay, so in lab, uh, we'll basically do these things. We'll create a REST API with AWS API Gateway. There I'll, you know, explain AWS, AWS uh, API gateway in a very high level. I'll not go through each and every bit though. I'll simply, you know, explain uh, what is AWS gateway. Okay, then we'll, we'll create a mock response from AWS gateway. Okay, it means uh, before writing any code in AWS Lambda, uh, we'll create a mock res response from API gateway. Okay, then we'll make API gateway as a trigger point to Lambda function. It means when somebody uh, invokes the API that we have exposed through API gateway, uh, that will trigger the Lambda function. So we'll make that as trigger point to Lambda function. Then we'll create a Lambda function. Basically, now I'm going to create very simple uh, Lambda function that will return a hard coded value. I'll write that in Node.js. Okay, then we'll do end-to-end -end, uh, test with Postman REST client. So that's the agenda of uh, hands-on lab okay so uh, to do it on your own you have to you need uh, AWS account okay freighter is uh, enough uh, for you know play around with uh, AWS Lambda and I think the first 1 million hit in a month I think that that is free okay I, I remember that is 1 million uh, so that will be totally enough for you to you know get your hands dirty on uh, AWS Lambda okay so now let me log into my AWS console. So I have log logged in my uh, AWS console. So as I told, I'm first I'm going to create uh, an endpoint, basically a REST API with API gateway, okay? So when you come down in your AWS console under application services, you can see API gateway, okay? So click on API gateway okay it will take you uh, through 
uh, API gateway page okay uh, so I don't have any uh, API endpoint uh, created yet so click on get started okay there we'll we'll get uh, this message welcome to API gateway message so before proceeding further let me explain what is an API gateway in general okay so as the name indicates that's a gateway okay it means all uh, your request should go through that gateway okay probably let, let me ex you know explain uh, a real time example of gateway basically okay see you want to catch a flight okay you can uh, you have to go through many process right so let's take one process you ca you ca basically you can't you can't you cannot uh, directly uh, you know directly enter airport without uh, doing any security check or security check or, or all those things right so you have to do all many things before you get uh, get into your flight okay so say your security check okay basically what they will do they they'll have a set of rules okay basically you shouldn't carry uh, carry liquid uh, any any liquid which is beyond i think 50 ml okay uh, that's one requirement okay one uh, rule okay then you can't you cannot carry uh, you know uh, beyond specified weight okay all those things they will check security people will check okay and once that is satisfied then you are allowed to get inside uh, you know your boarding area and you can then again they'll do they'll check the boarding pass before getting the flight okay so all these things think of code is flight and all remaining thing okay before you get into your flight all remaining things is gateway okay it means we have to we'll specify a set of rules okay and before get get into or before executing the real code we should pass through that gateway okay and gateway is a thing you know people will invoke the rest api that we have configured that we'll configure in gateway okay and in turn which in turn executes uh, the code that we have written against that api gateway okay that's that's you know in a very simple uh, real world example i can think of to explain what api gateway is okay so when i implement that you'll get no much you get you'll get no more okay so basically in api gateway we don't need to write any code okay we, api gateway is, is a place that we can configure uh, the signature of message okay or the authentication uh, authorization all those things or you know uh, if you want to add any additional bits to the request that uh, client has passed to us we can add that in aws gateway before sending it to uh, the real code okay it, exactly as you know similar you know likewise if you want to add uh, any additional bits to the inform information that we want to send to client basically the response we can do that in aws gateway so aws gateway is a place we can uh, you know define so many things and your real business logic will execute in uh, the code that you have written okay so before hitting the code we can do so many things you know basically we can manage the message we can uh, you know create the signature or you know uh, say for example um, all the messages that client uh, is going to or, or the or all the messages that client uh, uh, want to send send us should be in a format like there will be a json format with first name and last name and with the id okay we can specify a signature like that then client should follow that signature to send data to us okay if if it is not matching uh, that specific signature then in aws gateway we can uh, make uh, that message as a fader okay so and if you want to add more bits while we are sending data back to client we can set up that in the response part of aws gateway okay all those things is handling by aws gateway basically there are you know there are three ways we can uh, create our api so api is nothing but you know a rest service um, so one is with example definition so your definition is you know basically this swagger definition um if you're not very sure sure about swagger go to swagger.io uh, so that is kind of you know language i would say but mostly you know kind of syntax uh, that will define how your service should 
looks like ok uh, basically that will define your survey ok uh, that will the SAG definition will look like this ok uh, you can create your SAG directly here or you can import from another Swagger file ok when you select this you can select the Swagger file or you can create a new API directly here that's what I am going to do ok so I have selected new API so you should need a name for your API I would say code with with a that's my API name and can our description that's optional uh, say this is for AWS Lambda training okay so then click on create API okay now now we, ha we have to mention the resource okay so I'll tell you what resource is let me create that first action create resource okay so that resource means basically the path to your api okay say for example uh, www.codewithvijay.com slash uh, abc okay that slash abc is the path to your service okay so here we have to mention a, a resource name so that i have created as the path okay click on uh, this thing this guy enable api get a crs uh, uh, so crs means uh, cross origin resource sharing say if you want to invoke uh, your lambda from another domain okay then you have to enable crs okay say for example your lambda is in aws.com and uh, you want to run that, that from code with vj.com that domain or from that server then you have to enable CORS but anyway we are going to we are not going to create any application or any, any web application and we are not going to host it in any other domain so I'm not going to check that now okay but stay tuned I will have uh, another session that will that will release soon there I will do an end-to-end -end, uh, thing in this I will create a web application and I will host that in S3 uh, bucket okay and that application will interact with uh, AWS Lambda okay and Lambda will connect to DynamoDB so I'll release that very soon but stay tuned and you know, uh, subscribe as well so I've created a resource here that's a path click on create resource now we got our resource code with VJ next thing we need is to create a method okay that is basically the rest method okay so i hope you guys know uh, the rest verb basically you know get post put uh, delete uh, all those things okay so that's basically an http method okay so we have to create an http method so that is create method okay so what we want we know uh, we have all uh, these many http verbs so any delete get head options pass post and put okay i'm going to select get i hope you guys know the basics of uh, rest apis or rest service okay have selected get here okay now you can see which service we need to integrate with okay so you can see by default lambda selected okay we don't have any lambda function created yet okay and as I told before I'm not going to create lambda function now but in few minutes we'll do that okay before that let me I want to check uh, the API which I'm going to create is working fine or not before you know executing any code okay because of that I'm going to select mock okay if you have uh, there are other options as well I told uh, lambda function if you want to call any other HTTP you can select this one uh, if you have if you need to connect with any other AWS service you know say uh, whenever whenever you upload a file to your s3 bucket you want to trigger something okay uh, or or when or you know any other AWS service basically uh, the one I told is other way around to upload a file in s3 you want to trigger you know uh, basically that okay if basically if you want to connect to any other AWS service you can select that 
okay uh, well the one i told to upload file in s3 bucket then you want to trigger something okay that trigger actually we can set up with lambda okay say when you upload file if you want to trigger lambda function we can do that okay so anyway i'm going to mock it okay save it Now we'll get, now we got these things, okay, method triggers, okay. So here you can set up everything uh, which you need in your REST API, okay. Actually, you can set up, you know, authentication here, okay. I'm not going to explain all this now, anyway, uh, but I'll have another session uh, on API Gateway, on the, in that session, I'll probably explain everything, okay. So basically, you can see here, this is a client, okay, client will, when when somebody invokes this uh, API, it will go through all these steps, method triggers, integration triggers. Then it will you know hit the mock endpoint and it will return a response. Okay, in method response, if you if you want to add anything in the response, you can add it here. Okay, now I'm interested in integration response only because I'm I want to add a mock response. I've selected that, expand expand this one. Okay, and in body mapping template. There you can select application JSON. Okay, so here I'm going to create a sample JSON. Okay, so say first name, JMR, and last name. Jonathan. Okay, so this is a sample uh, response I have set up. Okay, let me save it. Let me save this as well. Okay, now we have set up uh, the mock response. Okay, it means still that is not ready uh, for somebody to invoke. Okay, now we have we have created everything. So the next step is we should deploy that, okay. So let me deploy this, click on deploy API. Then we have to mention the stage, which, which stage uh, you want to deploy to, basically the multiple stages of you know, development or system test or say UAT or all those stages, okay. So here I'm going to create a new stage. I don't have any stage yet because of that I'm going to create development, okay, simply, you know, as a dev okay if you want you can create uh, you can give stage description and deployment description uh, description as, as well okay click deploy okay now you can see that has been deployed and we can see an invoke url here okay and that is the stage is dev because of that you can see dev okay so this url alone will not work because this is a root url okay we need the path right we have given a resource name that's a path we have to give that path as well okay let me check this url first copy it and let me open postman if you don't know what postman is that you know that's a chrome plugin uh, that will act as a rest client you can test your rest service directly with postman okay let me open postman now so i've opened postman uh, so I've created a get method because of that I've selected a get. Okay, now let me paste the URL that I've copied. When I click send, it will not work because we did not mention the path that is this one, code with which I. Okay, now send that and you can see the sample response that we have configured has just returned okay now let me modify a bit you know probably i'll add an additional bit and see that is updating okay so let me go back to uh, api gateway so i'm in a aws gateway click on resources here okay 
go here in integration response yep let me modify this bit say I want to add one more thing that is location let's say present location London and say hometown Cochin that's in India so I've updated this one let me save this guy say save it now again I have to deploy that okay so deploy and say this dev deploy now you know uh, the latest JSON file I'm extracting in rest API in postman okay let's go and do, check that so I'm in postman again click send here now you know, the latest JSON has got updated cool so this API gateway now, now we have mocked the response Okay, actually that is not what we want. Okay, we want to connect AP with AWS Lambda. Okay, let's do that first. Sorry, let's do, uh, do that next. So I'm in, in API Gateway again. So now let's change uh, from mock response to Lambda function. Okay, so for that, click on resources here. Okay, and click on sorry. Click it here and select integration request and that the type is mock now instead of that select lambda function. Okay. And we we have to you know select a region. So I'm going to select maybe say just this one. Okay. Obviously, I don't have any lambda function yet. Okay. If I had a lambda function, then I would have get an option to select a lambda function. Okay. I can create multiple lam lambda functions, and I can select one of that functions. Okay. So I don't have a lambda function. Okay. Let me go and create a lambda function. Click here, create a lambda function that will take you to lambda function console okay so this is where you know lambda function has a lot many templates you know depends on re your requirement you can select one of your uh, one of these templates okay i'm going to create a blank function Okay, because I'm going to create a very simple lambda function that returns and ha returns a hard coded value. Okay, so click on blank function. Okay, then you have to select. Uh, ideally, you have to select a trigger point. Okay, uh, click on next. So the reason I did not uh, stop. Let me come back here. So the reason I did not select any uh, trigger here because you know uh, I can set up that in my API gateway page page itself. Uh, so I'm leaving it blank. Okay, uh, you can select other trigger points if you want. Say if you if if you if you upload uh, a file to your S3 bucket, if you want to trigger the Lambda function, you can select select S3. Uh, in in that case, S3 will be the trigger point to Lambda function. Okay, or if you update anything in a DynamoDB. Uh, then if you want to update a lambda function then dynamo db will be the trigger point to lambda functions okay so all these are the trigger points uh, to lambda function and to execute lambda function you need a trigger point okay so i'm leaving that as blank now click on next okay so here you have to mention a function name i'm going to give a function name as code with 
which I okay if you want you can give a uh, description as well okay let me give uh, pro camera training okay and the runtime you can select one of these uh, languages okay you can select node python and uh, c sharp and java okay i'm going to select I've, I've selected the latest node version that is 6.1 okay next thing is either you can edit your code in line here okay if or if you want to upload a zip file basically you can you know uh, create code in uh, any of any of the ids in your local machine and after that you can upload that code here okay or you can uh, upload from uh, s3 bucket if you want to upload from s3 bucket then you can select this guy uh, upload file from s3 or you can if you want zip then you can select uh, from a zip uh, file okay i'm going to edit the code inline here because that'll be a simple uh, function okay so if you come down further we can see you know a fu one function here uh, handler okay so that can be any name basically you can modify that name to any name okay only thing you have to do is if you if it if you change that name you have to change here as well okay uh, i'm going to leave it as handler itself okay from here let me return adjacent string okay and say location I would say hello I'm from lambda okay so well I'm going to leave this response uh, basically hard coded JSON string okay um, if you want you can write more business logic here but as i told i'm planning to have another session that will connect to dynamodb uh, and will host an application to s3 and we'll go through all these things uh, okay for now uh, you know i'm leaving like this now we have created lambda function okay so this is a lambda function okay. there then I have to select a role. Okay, uh, if you have, if you are aware about uh, IAM, um, Identity and Access Management, you can create a role there, and you can get that role here. Okay, uh, but now I'm going to create a, choose an existing role. Or if you don't have an existing role, you can create role from template. Or you can create a custom role if you want a custom role you can create that i'm not going to do that now okay um, or you know you can select a role from template okay if you don't have a role you can create a new role called uh, say you can give any name say lambda training okay something like this click next verify everything here after that click on create function it will take some time to create it okay now lambda function is ready if you want to test from here then you can test it okay test it from here okay I'm not going to test it from here anyway uh, because I'll, I'm going to test this from my REST API, but that's a good practice to, uh, to uh, test it from here. Okay, so now our Lambda function is ready, and you can see something called ARN here. So actually, this is uh, the URL to your Lambda function. Okay, if you want to invoke that Lambda fun function from uh, somewhere else, say. Uh, from your Alexa development kit or from your Alexa, then you have to uh, give this ARN, okay, or from or 
like any other trigger point you have to mention this ARN okay but now we are going to trigger from API gateway there actually I can select uh, the lambda function name directly okay let me come back here let me refresh this page okay let me select again here now let me select lambda function and select the same location okay now you know you can see uh, that warning message has gone now that you don't have a lambda function now we got a text box to select the lambda function okay let me type the lambda function code see it will show all the lambda functions we have selected that one okay click on save okay we will okay that's fine that's just a warning uh, you will not be able to retrieve previous execution configuration that is fine so I'm switching to lambda integration click ok ok uh, another message going to give permission that's fine that's what we want click ok ok now that is saving it will take some time again ok so that is saved ok now our integration point is lambda function if you click here you can see integration request is lambda okay not more and you can see here lambda and the function name is code with vj okay now when I test it through uh, postman we should be able to see the response that we have configured in AWS lambda okay let's go and test it now let me go let me go back to postman so before uh, going to postman i forgot one thing uh, that is to uh, deploy the application so we should deploy to uh, reflect the change so deploy api okay again stage is dev deploy it okay now it has been deployed okay again this you are let me copy it again now let me go to postman so I'm in postman now let me paste this URL and as I told we need the path code with VJ now when I run this we are expecting to expecting to see the result uh, that we have configured in AWS lambda function okay let me click send boom so this is what we have created in our lambda function so we got that okay so we did not want to spin up any server we did not want to manage any server all what we did was return a code return in a simple code and we have triggered that from an API gateway basically from REST service okay how easy it is if you are if you're not doing with serverless architecture or if you're not doing with serverless computing then you have to you need a server you have to host it on your own then you know have to fix ho all the hosting problems you have to go through all that pain now you see the beauty of serverless computing how easy it is you know for development and application hosting it's amazing isn't it also you can see uh, you can monitor uh, you know uh, basically you can see the hits or or you know ni kind of nice dashboard uh, in AWS Lambda there you can see uh, you know the number of hits and invocation time and all those things okay let me go to uh, AWS Lambda page and I'll show you uh, where we can monitor that so in AWS Lambda uh, when you select monitoring there you can see kind of nice uh, dashboard that is CloudWatch there you can see you know all these things basically invocations duration errors and all those things and if you want to see logs you can you, you can click on view logs on in cloudwatch so there you can see the complete log history of your uh, lambda function invocation it's called pretty nice cool feature isn't it so this is the latest one when you select on that one you'll be able to see all those logs okay 
Okay. So, so I guess that's pretty much on uh, in a high level on the introduction of uh, serverless computing and AWS Lambda. Okay. So, thanks for watching. And uh, welcome to the world of uh, serverless computing. This is, and as I told before, this is such an amazing, uh, amazing concept. Okay, so please get your hands hands dirty and stay tuned and subscribe uh, so that you will get notification for you know all upcoming videos. Uh, thanks once again for watching and have a nice day. Bye.